I'm David Carlin. I'm a senior associate at CISL. I'm also the head of risk for the United Nations Environment Programs Finance Initiative, where I cover climate and nature-related risks and opportunities with financial actors. I also am the founder of Cambium Global Solutions, where I work with governments and innovators to help them develop sustainability strategies, both to accelerate sustainable finance, manage their risks, and promote positive change within the financial ecosystem. So my role as a senior associate for CISL began probably a few years before its official inception when I had worked with Nina Siga and her team on a number of engagements around clients and also around risk frameworks for both physical and transition risks and climate change. And so we had developed a few thought pieces on bringing together ways that financial institutions manage both types of risks, but also ways that they can engage with their clients. And so from there, our work has grown. And in my capacity as a senior associate, I spent more time looking at that intersection between climate and nature and the financial sector, both exploring opportunities around nature-based solutions and thinking about the economic and financial risks associated with climate and nature breakdown. So finance really plays a central role when it comes to the future sustainability of societies. And there are tremendous opportunities that that presents, both in terms of supporting the growth of resilient communities, new innovations that are going to scale and power the future, but also major risks that a disruptive time. It's a period of not only mounting physical risks from climate change, but also new policy pressures, technological changes and market shifts that financial actors need to be ready for, and ideally that supervisors need to be planning for on a systemic level. So there's a significant number of these challenges, but as mentioned before, the opportunities really will be immense for firms that are forward-looking and put in place plans to take advantage and capitalize on these new changes. I think CISL's role in driving systems change really begins with the high leverage interactions it has with the corporate community, with senior business leaders, and thinking about how they drive institutional change within their organizations. So many of the organizations that CISL works with, both from the financial sector to the real economy, are ones that impact the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And so being able to drive these institutions forward not only can help make them leaders in their field, but can also really provide the case studies and examples that will prove to others what needs to happen in order to promote a sustainable way of doing business. And I think the thought leadership from CISL is really integral there. So is the engagement and the convening that really comes with the CISL relationship between them and the business community. One recent example of something that's been tremendously impressive has been the release of the International Sustainability Standards Board, or ISSB's, work around both wider sustainability expectations and climate-related expectations for disclosure. This has been an effort that began at COP26 in Glasgow and has really been about creating a common language and a common way of talking about sustainability and climate amongst both financial actors and the broader corporate community. In doing so, they've brought together not only the best of standards from the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, but also a common framework that regulators around the world can use in order to produce more transparent, more comparable, and more actionable disclosures. And I think these kind of international in initiatives are ways that we can really see sustainability moving faster. We can't go country by country. We can't go example by example. So this pulling together is exactly what we need if we're going to get the results that we want.